Have you ever felt lost trying to understand the X unit life cycle? You are not alone and it's time to change that. By the end of this video, you will have a clear picture on how to navigate through setup, teardown, collections, test fixture, and even some extra things that I have to show you. And let's start by the basics. Testing frameworks have a concept of setup and teardown. Setup is code that will be running before a test being executed and teardown is the opposite of that. It's code that will be executed by the end of the test execution and you can use them for multiple reasons. The typical use case is to set up a given set of data before running the tests and cleaning up that set of data by the end. And you do that because you want to make sure that tests are independent so you can run them at any given order without impacting each other. But how to use them in X units and how they really relate to other concepts like fixtures and collections. Let's take a look. Let's start with a simple example. I have here a set of tests. It's basically two tests. Each test will run twice. Why? Because I'm using member data. If you don't know what is member data, I have another video on it that I will link on the description. In a simple case like this, there's still a setup and a tier town, but we don't see that. Why? Because we don't have a constructor and we don't have a dispose. That's the way that XUnit defines what is a setup and what is tier town. While other frameworks may use things like attributes to define that the given method is a setup method or a tier down, XUnit aligns with the default conventions of C sharp and will take advantage of constructors and the dispose method. So the first thing that will run is this method, okay? It's the constructor. This will be executed before each test. And on the case that you are using something like inline data or member data, it will run per each entry of that data collection. So when you use setup code, you can instantiate many of the things that you'll be using on your test there. For example, on this case, I could pick this converter and move it to my constructor. So now I don't do, do that arrange on every single test. What about the teardown? Teardown is the dispose method. You just need to say that your test class implements the idisposable. So you define here the method of dispose and on this case I'm just logging something so by the end I can show you the order of things executing. Currently these tests are doing one thing. First running the setup, then running test, then running the teardown. Then they move to the next test and will execute setup, test, teardown and always doing that for all the tests. But there are other things that you can do inside of a single class. For example, XUnit supports this iAsync lifetime. The iAsync lifetime interface is something that you can use when in your setup you need to execute a synchronous code. So if you need to update a database or access the file system, you should do that code inside of the iAsync lifetime. And how does it change the life cycle of this class? So now what we'll be doing is each test, it will execute the setup, the initialize async, that is basically the asynchronous setup then executes the test, then the asynchronous dispose, so the asynchronous teardown, and then the teardown. But there's one extra thing that you can add on top of this. XUnit supports an attribute that is the before after test attribute. You can do your own implementation of that attribute like this one. What you will have access is to two entry points, the before and the after. This code will be executed before each test and this one will be executed after each test. So in your tests, what you need to do if you want to take advantage of that, it's simply going to your test where you want to apply this attribute and add the attribute there. For the tests that have this attribute, the life cycle is you run setup, you run the synchronous setup, then you run the before this attribute, execute the code, the after of the attribute, execute the asynchronous teardown, and then execute the teardown. This will happen each test. However, often we don't want to do that for each test. Imagine that your setup is accessing, for example, a database or a file system, it's cleaning up files, it's doing all those kind of things. You don't want to execute per each test. You want to execute that for a collection of tests. That's where you need test fixtures. What is a test fixture? You will create a class and on that class you will define in the constructor, once again, the setup code, all the tests that will be inside of that fixture. That doesn't mean that you don't have the setup per test class as well, but this one will execute before the test class. You define there and you can also define the teardown of that fixture. Once you have that, you just need to go to your test and in your test class you will define that it implements the I class fixture of that fixture that you just create. So now before running each one of those tests, it what you'll be doing is to execute first the setup of this test fixture 
the constructor. Then it will move to that life cycle that I explained to you before, and then we'll execute the teardown, that is the dispose of the test fixture. So if you need to seed some data into a table before running tests, you can do that on the fixture constructor. You run all of your tests, and by the end, you can, for example, reset state. But what if that resource that you are testing and you need to set up needs to be used by multiple test classes that you have. How can you do that? That's where you need collections. So let's simulate that. I have here my tests, but also I have a copy. They are exactly a copy of each other with different names. Both of them are using a I class fixture. So currently, for each of those classes, I'm running the setup of the test fixture. If I don't want that, I need a test fixture collection. And that is as simple as defining something like this. You give a name to your collection, you need to say here the collection definition and provide it a name. This name will be important. And then you say that it implements the I collection feature of test fixture. You don't need to write setup and teardown code here because the setup and teardown code that will run is the one by the test fixture. This class is never instantiated. Now what you want is to apply this collection to multiple test classes. So you will pick this name, you go to your test class, and we'll remove the I class fixture and you add the attribute collection test collection. So this name is important because you may have multiple collections and is this way that it relates to the correct one. And now we do the same to the other one to the copy. So currently the flow is quite simple. It first runs the setup of the fixture, then it will go through each class that is inside of that collection and will execute every single thing that I told you. Set up, set up a sync, before, execute, after, teardown, and all those things. By default, XUnit can run tests in parallel and in sequence when inside of a single class. And this is the type of behavior that you can change with collection. If you want to run even the test classes in sequence, you can do it through a collection. Now I just run my tests and we will notice by those debug.write line that you have seen through my test for sure, the order that this thing is run. And you will notice that I have a single fixture setup and a single fixture teardown. And this here is an example of running a single test. So it ran before the fixture setup, now is running the setup for that test, set up a sync, the before, the test, the after, teardown a sync, and then the teardown. Obviously that set up a sync and that before and after doesn't exist always, but I wanted to show you a complete set of steps that it can go through. If you want to have access to those sequence diagrams that I showed you, you can do it as a patron. And now that you master XUnit lifecycle, make sure you watch this video right here. But before you go, make sure you leave a comment if you want to see me exploring, doing another deep dive into any feature XUnit.